everyone, I'm Amy and I'm in the beautiful city of Qingdao. Believe it or not, this is actually China. So this Qingdao is a very interesting city. It's located on the coast of Shandong province and it's the city of skyscrapers, parks and beaches. Renowned as one of the most beautiful and cleanest cities in China, this is a modern city that's managed to preserve a lot of its past while at the same time keeping an eye straight to the future. So today I'm going to tell you what's up with Qingdao and why you might be interested in coming here. So one of the first things you'll notice about Qingdao is it doesn't really look like China at all. Like, I think I've already said it 10 times today and I'll probably continue to say it for the rest of the day, but I can't be in China right now. Like, this, <laughs> this cannot be China. Like many cities in the world, Qingdao has been influenced by colonialism. Believe it or not, Qingdao actually used to be a colony of Germany. The Germans built palaces, forts, villas, hotels, churches, and many other buildings. Because so many buildings in Germany were destroyed during World War II, Qingdao actually has some of the last remaining examples of Bavarian architecture left in the world. So I sense this must be the go-to place for getting wedding photos taken. I've just arrived at this main square outside the church and I can see like at least seven or eight couples getting their wedding photos taken. One, two, three. And we've got a four, five, six, seven, eight in the tree. Walking around, Qingdao has such a German feel. Like, check out this building behind me. I just, I think it's crazy that this German, European feel has come about from only 16 years as a German colony. I guess the Germans got pretty busy in those 16 years here. I just love these cobblestone streets. It's crazy, walking through these streets, I feel like I'm on a European vacation. But actually, I'm just in China. <laughs> And of course, we have the Germans to thank for Qingdao's reputation as the beer capital of China. So this beer you may be familiar with if you've ever been to a Chinese restaurant. It's um, the most popular beer in China and I think it's the fourth most consumed beer in the world. So I guess when Germans came to China on that brief 16 year stint, they brought the recipe for beer with them and the beer industry in Qingdao is still going strong. This here behind me, this is Dongzhou Jia, but it's more affectionately known as Beer Street. And now I'm about to enter the Beer Museum. So I'm here now at the Qingdao Beer Museum and Factory and I don't think you can come to Qingdao without coming here. I think it's important to come here because in order to understand Qingdao the city, you really have to understand Qingdao the beer. I also think it's really interesting that the packaging of the beer reflects the history of the time. So at first, the packaging had a real German influence because at that time, Qingdao was under German occupation. And then, after 1916, the Japanese occupied Qingdao, so of course the labels had a Japanese vibe to them. And then, after 1945, when it came back to Chinese um, ownership, you can see it's a more, a more of a Chinese kind of packaging. And if you don't end up visiting the museum, you have to at least try one of these. Man, I really like Qingdao. I just saw a man drinking beer out of a bag. Is that a thing here? So I can confirm drinking beer out of bags is a thing. I've, uh, I found this place with this Schweiger. Hi, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, and he pours the beer from the keg into the little bag uh, and, then, and then you drink it. So I've got to say, there's, there's a real novelty that comes to drinking your beer out of a plastic bag. It's definitely a first. Mm. Definitely a first for me. Mm. That's really good, straight from the keg. Mm. So I guess when in Qingdao, drink beer out of plastic bags. While you're in Qingdao, so close to the ocean, you've got to try some seafood. Actually, it would almost be impossible to avoid it. So these are the Qingdao mussels and they're considered a must-eat thing when you're in Qingdao. Um, actually, they have this saying, the three most important things to a Qingdao citizen is drinking beer, eating mussels, and swimming in the sea. So I've already accomplished two of those today, so I'm pretty happy. 
Qingdao is also conveniently located on the seaside, making it, in theory, perfect for a beach holiday. Uh, you know, I, I'm Australian, so when it comes to beaches, my standards are pretty high, but I guess if you really need to get that tan in, uh, you could set up a, a towel there. So don't get me wrong, there are a lot of tourists here, a lot of Chinese tourists, but the thing that surprises me is the lack of Western tourists. This city being on the seaside, having a reputation for beer, um, being a more Western place in China, I kind of expected to see more Western tourists and so far I've been here over 24 hours and yeah, I don't think I've even seen one. So these are the kind of people that I think would benefit from a trip to Qingdao. Firstly, the people that may already be living in China, whether you're a foreigner or Chinese, and you feel like going on a European holiday, but you have neither the time nor the money, come to Qingdao. Secondly, the people who are looking for a bit of a, bit of a relaxing holiday, people who need to like take a chill pill. Here you can walk through the cobblestone streets, have a picnic in one of the gorgeous parks, have a beer or two or three and gobble down on some amazing seafood. So yeah, I think that Tinder has something for everyone and I hope that this video has done its bit to convince you to come here. Okay, bye guys, see you next time.